The facade design pattern is a structural design pattern that takes multiple subsystems of our package and unifies them in a simple, easy to use interface for the client. Now this is especially important because the client shouldn't have to know about or understand how all the subsystems interact together. It should just get the unified interface that'll perform the functionality that it ultimately wants to perform. And the client won't be doing too much. I believe this pattern is pretty important and we're gonna see this in the demo. But for example, you hear a lot in the ASP.NET community about trying to remove fat controllers or controllers that do too much, have massive constructors, have just lots of lines in the file. They're taking too many subsystems and doing all the logic within the controller. Ideally, those subsystems should be moved into a facade and then the controller only has to know about the facade, which is gonna do all the work. So that's just one place where I could see the facade pattern being useful but there's many others and hopefully this demo will inspire some ideas of where you can use the facade pattern. So here in this demo, I have a couple of subsystems and the first subsystem I have is a user repository. And we can see that in the services folder, I have user repositories and this just interacts with my entity framework database and gets users for me. The other subsystem is my user preferences repository. And right now I have this implemented using a file and what we can do is we can get a user's preferences by the user ID. And this simply just loads up a preferences.json file that I have in my directory. And if we look at user preferences, it just has some things like if the user's profile is private and also their color scheme for their profile as well. So light blue, dark, basically just rip those out of Visual Studio. And we can also look at the user. So I didn't go over this, but a user just has an ID, which we'll use to get the user preferences an email and a username. So pretty basic application, but the main idea here is that we have two subsystems, one to get users and another subsystem to get the user preferences. Anyways, let's look at this run method. So this takes two parameters, one for each of my subsystems. So we're gonna implement our logic for the application in this run method. And what I wanna do is first get a user. So we'll use our user repository and get by username but the user I want to get is singleton Sean, and this is all a single wait. So we will await this and put it into a user variable. And then I want to get the preferences for that user. So I will use my user preferences repository, get the preferences by user ID. We can pass in our user ID, very convenient. And we have to await this as well and put that into a user preferences. And now part of the logic of my application, I want to check if the user's profile should be private and that's in my preferences. And if the profile should be private, then we're going to throw an exception. And the exception I have over here in my exceptions folder, a forbidden profile read exception. So we're not allowed to view this profile, but if we can read the profile, then we are going to create that profile. So I have a profile model. I'll show that off in just a second, but that takes in the username, which we have on our user and the color theme, which we have on our preferences. And if we look at our profile model, all we have is the username and color theme and also a two string override, which we'll see in just a second, because now all we're going to do is write the profile to the console and let's see this in action. And there we go. There is my profile. So there's my username and my color theme. But the issue we have here is that our program.cs and specifically this run method, that is essentially our client and our client is doing way too much just to write a profile to the console. So it has to get the user then the user's preferences, check if their profile is private, create the profile, blah, 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 and then write it to the console. Ideally, all the client needs to do, which is this run method, is just get the profile by the user's username. So we're gonna create a facade to satisfy that functionality, and then the client isn't gonna have to know about the user repository, the user preferences repository. All it can do is use the facade and get the profile by the user's username. And again, the benefits of that are adhering to the single responsibility principle. So our facade will be responsible for bringing our subsystems together. And then our client will be responsible for just running the application and getting the profile for whatever user we want. And another benefit is since all of the subsystem interaction will be moved into a facade rather than just baked into this run method, it's going to be much more reusable because we can just reuse the facade wherever we need to get a profile. So for example, if we had like an ASP.NET Core web application and we needed this logic inside of a controller method handler, instead of just copy and pasting this, which would be terrible, we're gonna have this in a facade so we can just reuse the facade between our run method and our 
ASP, not that controller. Anyways, let's make that facade. So I'm gonna create a new class over here. And for naming this, let's think about what our facade is gonna do. Well, it's going to read a profile. So I'm gonna call it the profile reader. I guess you could call it something like the profile reader facade. And maybe I'll do that for this demo just to point out that this is the facade. I'm gonna do that. But probably in my own application, I'll just call it the profile reader. We don't necessarily have to put the pattern into the name. So our facade is bringing subsystems together. So we're going to need those subsystems as fields in this class. So first the database user repository, and then the file user preferences repository, and then generate a constructor for those. And now what is our profile reader facade going to do? It's going to read a profile by a user's username. So I'm going to have a single method on here that will return a profile and I'll simply call this get by username and that will take in the username of the profile we want to get import everything we need and now for this method we can just grab this from our program.cs so just cut this all out rename our variables import the exception make sure we pass in our username rather than the hard-coded singleton Sean there we go and then return the profile at the end of the method and since we're throwing an exception in here I love to document my exceptions so we will do that. I guess first document the entire method and then document the exception. This is a forbidden profile read exception that is thrown if the profile is private. And now back in the program at CS, let's set up our facade. So instantiate that up here and that'll take in the user repository and the user preferences repository. And now what we're gonna do is pass the profile reader to our run method. So this is gonna change and update our method parameters down here. So another great thing about the facade pattern is now our run method just takes in this single parameter. So since we unified our subsystems, there's only one class that we have to deal with. So this pattern is also great if you notice your constructor is getting gigantic or you have a method that takes in a bunch of different services, then maybe that class or method is doing too much and you could use a facade. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to use this facade and get a profile by a username. And we want Singleton Sean's profile. I'll wait that. And then we'll simply write that profile to the console. But if I look at this method, we see there is a forbidden profile read exception. So we're going to catch that. Good thing I had that documentation so that I could remember that exception. And if we catch that exception, we're going to say profile is private. And now as we can see, this run method is much simpler, but it's still just as powerful as before does the same exact thing. Let's see that in action. And there is our profile. And now let me change my profile to private. Try this again. And we should get the profile is private. So now we have this much simpler profile reader facade interface. And all we have to do is get the profile by username rather than having to deal with all of our subsystems right here in the run method. So we can reuse this facade wherever we want for any client and they're going to be pretty happy because it's going to be pretty easy to use. So the facade pattern, definitely something that you should apply whenever you notice you have a class or method that's doing way too much or you have a class or method that's using too many subsystems and you can unify all of that into a single facade that is much easier to use. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comments section. If you're enjoying the channel or enjoyed the video, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.